Welcome to STEM Live. I'm Alan and I'm here in the Shetlands for this live lesson. Now I know I'm in the Shetlands because there's a Shetland pony who's come over to see what we're up to today, which is very, very cute. Well, we're here because we want to find out more about space. But why have we come all the way to the Shetlands to do that? Well, that's because the UK spaceport which is a bit like an airport, but going into space, is being built here on the Shetlands. And we're going to be finding out all about life in space with the experts from Saxavord Spaceport. Now, we'd love to keep in touch with you today. We want to hear your questions, and I'm going to be asking you some questions for you to answer to. So you can keep in touch using some of the very clever tools that we have on our computers. I'm going to go and find the experts from Saxavord, and I'll see you in a minute. To the side of the screen, you can see the Slido box where you can ask questions and respond to the questions we ask you. And down below, there's the downloadable resources for you to use in your classroom. Welcome. Hey. You made it. Jason, good to see you again. Good to see you again too. Here we are. Well, you, yeah, welcome to our HQ. For those of you who joined us yesterday for our fabulous question and answer session with an astronaut and a trainee astronaut, you will remember Mason. Mason is learning how to become an astronaut. So Mason has two jobs. One is learning how to be an astronaut. Two is helping children learn all about space and the fabulous work that happens here at Saxavod and their amazing rockets, which we're going to find out about today. So here we are. Get me inside, I'm freezing. Oh let's yeah, go. let's get you in. Afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you. And then we're just going to go over this to the right. Yep. So here we are in the main hall of the spaceport. What happens in the main hall? Yeah, so this is where all the fun stuff happens, uh, like music, we have performances, and we even stream the rocket launches will be from this space too. So this is like a school hall where you might put on a play or present something or do a performance. It's just like that, but for the arts here at Spaceport. Exactly, because for us, art is just as important as your science, your technology, your engineering and maths. So we want to give that space as a part of this as well. So people on the island can be creative here. Exactly. And speaking of that, I have something extremely special for all of you today. Tell me more. Some local kids made us a rocket that we can actually get into and see what it's like to be an astronaut. Do we have to go back outside? No, I've actually got it just right over here. Oh my word, it is. It's Wow, that's fabulous. And this was made by some children on the island. It was. They, we threw out a challenge and we thought we'd get just little rockets and they made this that you can go into. So would you like to check it out? Would we like to check it out? I think so. Wow, this is fabulous. And this was made by the... Let me just... Oh, can yeah. we go inside? You can. Wonderful. It's got a door, just like a proper space rocket. Wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to look out the window too. And I have a special uh, surprise for you in there as well. <gasps> I think I can see. Who's this? Oh my word. Hello. Hello there. You in your space suit. Who's this mate? This is Snoopy. And Snoopy goes way back with the space program uh, as one of the first mascots of the original astronauts that went into space. Amazing. So why, why would they take a, a mascot? What's, why is that important to the astronauts? So for astronauts, it's about showing when you finally make it to zero gravity. And so this might be sitting in the capsule and as soon as you cross into space, it starts floating and that's your first indicator. Wow, so that you're out of the, the, would the astronauts be strapped in, would they? Fully strapped in, you have your shoulder, you have your waist coming up middle, and you're just strapped in so you can't move except for maybe your arms. So they wouldn't be floating around, but no. poor Snoopy but doesn't Snoopy. get a seatbelt, no. and he floats, and that's how they know they're in space. How cool is that? Well, you're a very brave Snoopy going into space, aren't you? <laughs> right, can I get in? Yeah, go ahead. Can I get you Snoopy? Oh, yeah. You look well, after Snoopy. Right, I'm going in. Oh, I'm a too big. Oh, watch out. Oh, no. no. I do, I fit in. I do fit in. Here we are. I'm inside a space rocket made by the children of the Shetland Islands. And I can see all the things that they've used to make it. We've got a bit of a washing machine here. We've got the cooker here that's been used to give us some dials to turn. And we've got some switches. Ready for liftoff. And this piece here is from a microwave. I wonder if they have microwaves in space. Look at all this wonderful gadgetry. 
And Mason, would it be a bit like this on a space rocket? Yeah, so this actually reminds me a lot of the training that I was doing just a couple months ago, where we would have similar switch boxes. Like when, yeah, so as we're, say for my training, it was about fire safety. So when something happened, you have an order where you have to flip the switches and think about it. So it's a perfect training tool that's just like what astronauts would really use. So the children made this for a bit of fun, but actually they were quite similar to what would be on a real space rocket. That's yeah. amazing. And Snoopy's been in here too. Snoopy's been in here. I'm coming back out. In fact, before I come back, <laughs> can you see me? I'm in space. Hi, Snoopy. Uh, right. All right. En enough of this silliness. On with the live lesson, everybody. Your first challenge, children, in your <gasps> classrooms is to work with your teacher and all your friends to think about a toy. It could be a doll, it could be a teddy, it could be a Snoopy, it could be a robot or a figure. But I want you to find one toy or robot or figure or somebody that you're going to bring to the lesson today so they can learn to be a space cadet too, just like Snoopy. everybody we are now in mason's office looking at his desk with all his space things on it i hope you've got your class toy that's going to learn how to be a space cadet like snoopy remember you can send us some pictures perhaps on twitter using the hashtag stem live and then we can see your space cadet toy as well just like snoopy and there's another snoopy another snoopy the snoopy's everywhere because nasa has lots of snoopies nasa has lots of snoopies this is one that's kind of modeled off the one that was going with the artemis rocket oh wow so this this would be sat there floating into space to let all the astronauts know that we're now in zero gravity right i'm going to put that down what else have we got here on your desk yeah oh hang on a minute hold on a minute I recognize this. Yeah. Yesterday, children, we did a question and answers session where Mason and another astronaut to answered some questions and you were wearing this. I was. Can we, can we see it yeah. again? This is one of my old flight suits. Wow. It comes from the, the shuttle program. So. There's your name on it, Mason Robbins, stitched on. Yeah. Wow, look at that. All your badges. Different pins and awards that I've uh, picked up with Amazing. So, oh, wow, yeah. that's great. I have well, something really special for you. Go on. If you look behind you, I have a training helmet. <gasps> high altitude oh, training. Can I, am I all right to pick this up? Please. Is that okay? Wow, children, look at this. Oh my word, it's a space helmet, an astronaut's helmet. It is. Can I put it on? Go for it. I'll put, I'll put the under pit bit on. Oh, you, okay, you put that bit on. I'll put this bit on. This is amazing, yeah. look at this. You want to see something really cool? Show me. Grab right here. Over? Here. No, on yours. Oh, okay. Right there. Yeah. Now look at the camera. Yeah. Now push it down. Push it. Oh, <laughs> wow. Let me do that again. Oh, it keeps hitting my nose. Oh, I'm, no. My nose is too big to be an astronaut. Oh, no. What but does this do? Is this... It just, so as you're getting into the sun, it just takes the sun out of your eyes, just like sunglasses. Like but sunglasses that pop out of your hat? How cool is that? Because you can't take them on and take them off because when you're going, we bring this down, oh. we close this, <laughs> and you can't touch your eyes. So you can't take your sunglasses on and off. That's and we so can't cool. hear you right now, so it's great. Does my voice sound funny now? <laughs> it certainly does to me. <laughs> yeah. Wow, oh, oh that's yeah. great. Thank you for letting me wear that. You've got other things on. Is this made of Lego? That is, so just like everyone likes to play with Lego back at home, I love playing with Lego too, but it's also great because I can show you how a rocket would go up into space just by playing with Lego. So Amazing. It's just equally as important and useful. So for us, imagine this was a full rocket, not just the two pieces. You're gonna launch up, and when it gets almost to where it needs to go, the bottom is gonna be out of fuel, it's gonna go away, 
And then the second stage will take it into the orbit. Wow, so like a mini rocket in a big rocket. Exactly. That's amazing. And it's been made out of Lego. Maybe you could play with some Lego at home or in school and make your own space rocket. That could be fun. Right. Yeah. I am seeing this chap here, oh. this model of an astronaut. And he's floating around, isn't he? Because there's no gravity. There's nothing to bring him down to the ground because there's no gravity or very little gravity up in space. And we talked, didn't we, about Snoopy floating around. Now, we said before that the astronauts wear a seatbelt, like a space seatbelt. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Because you've been yeah. in one, haven't you? Yeah, so with the training that we do with the seatbelt is it's how do you put it on quickly? How do you take it off quickly? But it's, you have a five point harness and you're, you do your, your lap, then you do your shoulders, and then you bring one over the middle, holds in, and it holds you tight so you can't move around. It's just your arms there. So it's not just one seat belt. Not like it's in a car. No, you've got a lot. So we'll do it together. Okay, you ready, everybody? Imagine you're in your space seat. Are you doing it with me? Yeah. Okay, imagine you're an astronaut. You're about to lift off into space. We've got to put our space seat belts on. So we're gonna take one from this side, we're going to do oh, the waist first. Waist first, sorry. Yeah. sorry. Right. I'm learning to. Put the waist so, together. Waist, are you ready everybody? Waist. And then we're going to do the shoulder across. Shoulder across. Other shoulder. Shoulder across. And then reach through the bottom. Reach yeah. through the bottom. And, and then there we are. Okay, let's try, let's try that again. Let's try that again. You ready? So, right. waist, waist. Shoulder. 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 And pull, it pull it through the middle. One more time, everybody do it with me, okay? You ready? We're all astronauts. We're in our rocket. We're about to take off. We're going to do the waist, the shoulder, the other shoulder, and pull up the middle. Wow, we are all in our space seats. But you know what? Now we're going to pretend we're in space. Because if we take off our space seat belts, what's going to happen? Well, here's the cool thing is they're made to get out really quick. So all you have to do is Press that button right there and it all pops open. Everything just flies up and you're weightless. Okay, we're gonna try that together. We're gonna press, I'm gonna count to three. We're gonna press our button and then we're all gonna drift up. So I want to see you. If you're sat on the carpet, you have to get up. If you're sat at your chair, you have to get up. And we're gonna be squatting here as well in our pretend chairs. Here we go. Are you ready? On three, we're gonna press our button. One, two, three, press your button. <gasps> Ah, we're floating in space. Are you floating too? <gasps> Look at your arms, they're floating up. Your fingers are floating. <gasps> Look at Mason's leg, it's mine's floating too. <gasps> Is your leg floating? Oh my word, Snoopy's floating. Hi Snoopy, we're all floating together. <gasps> I hope you're all floating in your classrooms. Are you feeling your arms really light? It's floating. I think we need all to right. get back into get our back. seats. So remember, What's the procedure? Here we go. Ready? Back into our seats and we're gonna put our space seat belts on with the waist, the shoulder, the other shoulder, and pull it in. Oh, all right. amazing. You've now all been astronauts floating in space and you should be, if you're a good astronaut, you should be back in your seat, securely tucked in with your space seat belt. Now, I've got a very special person who wants to give you a message. But before she does that, I've got a question for you. Back in 1969, a long, long time ago, somebody walked on the moon for the first time. I'm gonna give you a minute with your teacher to have a think and wonder if you can work out who it was. Do you know who the first person to walk on the moon was? Hello and welcome to everyone in Key Stage 1 and I hope you're enjoying the live lesson from Saxaboard Spaceport. I'm Helen Sharman, the UK's first astronaut, and it's so exciting that you're all here today to learn a bit about Neil Armstrong and living and working in space. I was fortunate enough to get the opportunity to go into space myself and it's fantastic that you're all getting the chance to hear from Mason and others who are hoping to follow in our footsteps. 
Don't forget to send in your questions to Mason and the team at Saxaboard, and hopefully you'll be lucky enough to have your question answered in the live lesson. Wow, how cool is that? Britain's first astronaut made a video just for you while you're learning all about space. That's great, isn't it, Snoopy? Yep, Snoopy's very impressed. Now, Snoopy is our space cadet, and he's learning all about space with you, and we hope that you've all got your space cadets in your classroom, and I hope they've got a good view right at the front where they can be learning, and I'm gonna put Snoopy there too. And we are going to meet another very special guest, because we've got one of Mason's friends who's joined us, all the way from America, all the way to here in the Shetland Islands, and then all the way around the world to you in your schools. Sydney, lovely to meet you. How are you? Hi, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm so happy to be here. Oh, we're so happy to have you here. We're having a great time here in our live lesson. So tell us a little bit about you and your adventures with space travel. Absolutely. So, hey y'all, I'm Sydney Hamilton. Um, I'm from Dallas, Texas originally, but I live in Los Angeles, California. Um, and ever since I was a little girl, I have always wanted to fly, superhero style. I would stand outside with a blanket tied around my neck and arms straight out. And once I was in the ready position, I would try to take off. Not once did my parents tell me that I couldn't fly so it made sense that I became a rocket scientist. So I went to school and I studied math and aerospace engineering, and now I work at a huge aerospace company working on not only rockets, but airplanes and satellites. And it's been so exciting to just be able to keep the world connected with the internet. So when you think about Wi-Fi, those are some of the satellites that I work on. When you think about sending mail to people. I work on those airplanes. And when we think about going to space, I've been able to work on those rockets. Wow. So wow. Space is really integrated into my life. And it's really cool because, like I said, I've always been interested in the skies. And now I'm training as a commercial astronaut. So what better way to live out your dream? Fabulous. I wonder how many people in their schools, how many of you have put on a cape and pretended to be a superhero, maybe a mask as well, or a hat, or a full costume like this, and pretended to be a superhero that could fly, just like Sydney did when she was a little girl. And maybe if you have done that, you could be an astronaut one day too. Now, Sydney, I know you know so much about space. You are one of the real experts about space. But I want to ask you about one particular thing. I want to know, I want to know about eating in space. Eating is one of my favorite things. <laughs> I love eating, I love all food. And I want to know, if I was an astronaut and went to space, what would I be eating up in space? What can you tell us? So I think it's going to be a little bit different than what you imagine. So what we do is we take food that's very nutritious. You know, when we're on Earth, we eat our fruits and vegetables and breads and meats, and we try to make sure that we're getting all the nutrition that we need. That's all the good bits, all the good things, the vitamins and all the good things that are good for us, yeah? Exactly, and I love to eat. However, when you're in space, you don't have a lot of space. So you're trying to condense things and make sure that things aren't just floating around. So you end up freeze drying it, which really means that you're shrinking it down, you're taking out all of the moisture and you're putting it in a vacuum sealed bag, so airtight bag, and bringing these very nutritional items up to space. So you're saying that we can, you're saying that we can shrink food so it's not as big. <laughs> you know what? That's a good way to think That's about it. That's amazing. And by taking all the water out, we make it really, really small. So if we've, taken the, if we've taken the water out to make it small, how do we get it to be big again? That's a great question, and I want you all to think about that. So we're taking out all the water, 
making it really small so when it's time to eat the next thing that we probably need is water. Ah. Rehydrate, that's what it would be called, rehydrating or adding water to that so that you're able to eat it. So if we took a piece of fruit, if we took a piece of fruit and we took all the water out and made it really, really dry and really, really small, it might not taste very good. But if we add the water back in, it'll get bigger again and hopefully taste nice. Is that fair? Hopefully tastes a little better than when it's small. <laughs> One good example of a food that you're probably familiar with that when the moisture is taken out, it's still edible, is a grape to a raisin. Now you can't really rehydrate a raisin, but the grape is losing moisture and getting smaller and smaller. And now it's packable and it lasts a lot longer than a grape does. And so that's another thing that it helps with. You don't want your food to spoil. How long are you gonna be in space? You know, it's, it's not a quick trip, it's not like a, road trip that you would take with your family. This is a long trip. So you want to make sure the food stays fresh and that you're able to eat it at any time. So that's another reason that you want to freeze dry the food. Okay, well, I've got a question that I'm going to ask Sydney and then I'm going to ask Mason uh -oh. and then I'm going to ask all of you. And I want you to type your answer in the window next to this box here to my left. I want you to type your answer. So should we see what Sydney's answer is first? Sydney, if you, if you, or when you next go to space, what meal would you most like to take with you from planet Earth to have in space? That's a great question. So, like I shared, I grew up in Texas. So a food that we eat all the time is tacos. So tacos are basically, a, it can be a soft or a hard shell. It's like a tortilla. If you've ever had a wrap, you take that, you put your meat in, you can put uh, onions and you can choose to put lettuce or cheese in there and you put a little salsa and it's super delicious and you take a bite and then it just crunches everywhere. <laughs> but because it's a little messy, I'm sure it's not the best space food, but it is really good. We even have Taco Tuesday where we have a day where everyone goes out and get tacos. We do the That's... same in California because they are Delicious. Well, we've been learning about things floating around in space. We talked about Snoopy floating around in space. Yeah. I don't think I'd want to be in space with Sydney if she's got all those crumbs. <sighs> Lots of crumbs come with Sydney. What about you, Mason? What would your meal, if you could take one, what would it be? Oof. Well, if I was in space with Sydney, I would definitely take a Hoover with me and follow her around and then That's suck a good up all idea. crumbs. But for me, I've lived... Yeah, see? Teamwork. I got you. Um, for me, I think I've lived in Scotland long enough. I mean, you can tell by the accent, I'm very Scottish. <laughs> uh, I come from Oklahoma, which is actually just above Texas, but I think I would take fish and chips. Fish and chips, that's one of my favorites too. Yeah. That's great, fish and chips. Right, children, what would you take into space? I want you to write the food in the big word cloud next to me that you would take. Your teacher's gonna type as fast as they can with lots and lots of answers in there. So everyone around the world, tell me what you would take if you were going to space with Sydney and Mason. Wow, thank you for all your answers there. So many different foods and meals that you want to take. That's fabulous. Lots of pizzas, lots of burgers, lots of unhealthy things, and some fruit in there as well. But pizza seems to be a popular one. Sydney, could we have pizza in space? Absolutely. It may not be exactly like what we have on Earth, but you can definitely make pizza in space. 
You want to take the flatbread. They have the tomato paste, cheese, and salami, and there you go. You have pizza in spades. Amazing! Wow. Do you know what, Mason? I want to practice making my pizza in space. Are pizza. you ready? All right, let's do it. Okay, children, we're going to do this together. Now we're all sat with our space seat belts on, so we're going to need to take them off. Do you remember how to take your space seat belts off? I hope so. We're going to take it off with one big push of the middle button, remember? And when that pops, we're going to start floating. So we're going to float, but we're going to stay where we are while we make our pizzas. We're not going to go too far, but we are going to float. Are you ready? Here we go. So, press the big button and off we go. We're floating. Here we are, floating in space. Mason, come over here. There we go. There's Sydney's floating in space too. Okay, we need to make our pizza. Here we go. Are you ready? Mason, you hold the flatbread. It's floating. It's floating. Get it back quick. Okay, hold on to it, Mason, because it's going to float away. I'll get some tomato paste. Here we go. I'm going to squirt it, but it's floating. Quick, quick, quick. Oh. Uh, uh. Right, we've got the paste on. Now we're going to get some cheese. So I'll take some cheese and look what I can send it from that hand to that hand. And I can Super. put it on there. Are you ready? Are you going to catch it? Woo! Splat! We've got cheese on. Are you making your pizza too? We've got our cheesy tomato -y base. Sydney's got one too. Hopefully you've got one in your classroom. Yours is floating. Quick, catch it. Is yours floating, children? Make sure it's not floating around your classroom. And now it's time for a little bit of salami or pepperoni, whatever you want to put on the top. So I'm going to grab that piece and push it on, oh. and that piece and push it on. And now Mason's going to let go of our pizza and we're both gonna take a bite at the same time. You ready? Come on, here we go. Mmm, yummy mm. space pizza. Oh, it's floating off, get it back, get it back. Oh, he's gone to get it, he's swimming through the air. He's gone, he's eating it all on his own. Oh, I've lost my pizza. Oh. Right, children, back into our seats for our space seat belts. Are you ready? Down we go, everybody down we go. And remember how we do it, we do the waist. Waist? The shoulder, shoulder, the other the shoulder, shoulder, and right. up through, through the, the middle. middle. So hopefully you've all got your, you're on that camera now, because we're all back down here now. Hopefully you've all got your space seat belts on. Right, Sydney, anything else to tell us about eating in space before we go? Absolutely, so when in space, you have to care about your health. It's super important. So when we're on Earth, after we eat, we go brush our teeth. And what do we do with the toothpaste afterwards? We spit it in the sink. So, however, when we're in space, what do you think we do with that toothpaste after we brush our teeth? Do we spit it in the sink? Do we spit it in the bin? Do we swallow it? Or do we just let it float around the space station? What do you think? Mm, that's a good mm. question, yeah. I hadn't thought about that, because here, with gravity, it all goes down the sink. But there's no gravity, or very little gravity in space. So what do you think, kids? What would you do? What do you think the astronauts do? Sorry. What do you think the astronauts do? Do they spit it down the sink? Do they spit it in the bin? Do they swallow it? Or do they just let it float around? Oof. Good question. Over to you. Let's see. So congratulations to everyone who said guess that you would swallow it. You want to make sure things aren't just floating around in space. Like you don't want my tacos floating around in space. We don't want toothpaste floating around in space. You want to keep water away from all the machinery and away from your crewmates hair. So you want to make sure if you are ever in space brushing your teeth that you swallow the toothpaste. 
That's amazing. Thank you so much for joining us today, Sydney. That's been amazing to learn about all about food and even how to clean our teeth. Thanks, Sydney. Bye. Thank you, Sydney. that amazing to meet Sydney all the way from America where she's learning how to become an astronaut too just like Mason and Mason has a lot of very cool friends and has invited another one of his friends to our live lesson today and this lady Joan is with me right now hi Joan hi now you're in America too but nowhere near California is that right no, I'm actually on the other side. I'm in Florida, right next to Disney World. <sighs> Near to Disney World. Have you been to Disney World? I've been to, have you been to Disney World? I have, long time ago when I was. Yeah, yeah, everybody, you've been, been to, to Disney, Disney World? World. <laughs> I bet you have, you're, you're next door neighbors. That's amazing. So you live in Florida and you too are an expert on space and you will be going to space just like Mason and Sydney will be too. Is that very exciting for you? I'm super excited. It's something that I've dreamed of as a kid, same as everybody else in this room. Amazing. So tell us a little bit about yourself. What do you do? What are your particular interests and where are you up to with your space adventures? I am an engineer at NASA and I help launch rockets like this one to space. Wow. And I help send rovers that explore other planets. And then I also help send satellites that give us information about our own planet here on Earth. And I'm very excited about space. I have loved it since I was a little kid and I'm really excited to go up there and see a beautiful blue planet from above. Amazing. I'd love to do that. Would you be up above the earth looking back down on the planet like a little marble or a football just floating out there in space? That would be around. very cool. One, one of the coolest things Jones ever did that she's super humble about is she was one of the engineers for the DART mission that crashed the satellite into the asteroid. Wow, that's very cool. Wow. And you were involved in that. Yeah, imagine Imagine um, trying to throw a baseball at something that you're trying to hit that's 12 million miles away and that target is moving at the same time. That's what me and the engineers did with the DART mission and like Mason said, I'm super excited and humbled to have been able to be a part of that. That's amazing, wow. Now, you are an expert on lots of things about space and I am very interested in how astronauts keep themselves fit and healthy, both on the Earth, because it's quite a, a, a physical job, and also up in space, because I'm guessing you can't go to the gym or go for a swim or play some football outside with your friends. So how do you keep fit and healthy on the planet Earth for you? And how do astronauts keep fit and healthy up in space? So to train it to be an astronaut, it's really important to be both healthy here on Earth and in space because if you jump up, you automatically jump down. And that's what you do here on Earth. But in space, you continually float in space. So in order for you to make sure that your body is fit, you need to make sure that you're working those muscles to ensure that when you go to space that you're able to experience that zero gravity, but be able to be healthy and fit for it. So do, do astronauts have any gym equipment up in space? Any weights or anything like that that they can use in space? That's a good question. They do. So they have treadmills that are designed to keep them to run, but also stay on the ground because they're constantly floating. They need to make sure that the treadmill allows them to stay on the treadmill for them to continuously keep running. Wow. And you've got a video you can show us of that, can't you? I do. Check out the video below so you can see an astronaut running on a treadmill in space. Wow, and we can see how they are almost tied down so they don't float off the treadmill. Because I guess they don't use their legs very much. 
they have to use their legs very much. Even though they're constantly floating, they need to make sure that their muscles are still working so that when they come back down on earth, they don't just tumble onto the ground, that they can actually stand up and walk. So that's why they continuously need to work out. They sometimes work out three hours a day for six days a week. So imagine working out that many times and for that long of a day. That's amazing. So we don't, we see Mason and I and the children, we've been pretending to be astronauts all day and we haven't got a treadmill. Are there any exercises we could float around and do right now? I think I have a few in mind. If you all want to join me, let's come on and work out. Okay, well, we know that if we want to get out of our seats, we need to press the button. So make sure you press your space seatbelt button so you can float too. Ready, Mason? Let's do it. Ready, Joan? Here we go. Let's do it. Press the button and off we go. Floating in our space station. Oh, Mason, we haven't got a treadmill. We haven't got a treadmill, but Joan's going to tell us what we can do. Joan, what can the children in their schools do to keep fit and healthy in space? Okay, so now that you're floating around, you need to make sure that you can at least use your arm movements. So for me, extend your arms as far as you can and then bring them in. And do that a few times because you're allowing your arms to use your muscles while you're floating in space. Are you doing that in your classrooms? I hope you're not banging into other astronauts floating around as well. Keep your arms going. Oh, my arms are getting tired yeah, already. I feel like a superhero. Yeah, this floating around. What else well, should we the do? The next thing we are going to do is you're going to take those arms and you're going to extend them forward like you are a superhero. So you're oh, going to wow. do that a few times as well. And you're going to pretend like you're floating like Supergirl or Superman and you're a superhero. Amazing. Are you doing that in your classrooms? I hope so, space cadets. You're not coming to space if you're not fit and healthy. So I need to see some really healthy astronauts in those classrooms. Oh, Joan, I'm, I'm getting a bit hot and sweaty here. Snoopy's not doing oh, his good. exercises. Come on, Snoopy. We want to see Snoopy. Snoopy need to join oh, us Snoopy's to busy too. An there we go. Snoopy's oh. busy too. Oh, right, everybody, let's go back to our seat belts. Here we go. All let's right. push ourselves back down into our seats. Snoopy can sit there, and we're going to put our seat belts back on. We do the waist. Waist. And then the, the shoulder, shoulder. The other, other shoulder, shoulder. And underneath and into the middle. Click. Oh, there we go. Joan's got her seat belt on too. Hopefully, you've all got your seat belts on too. Amazing. Joan, thank you for giving us a workout today. I'm a bit out of breath, are you out of yeah. breath? We need to get fitter before you go to space. <sighs> oh. Okay, Joan, thank you, you very much. We have to do a little much. bit more exercises. We will indeed. Joan, thank you so much. We're gonna play another little video of some astronauts in space right now doing some exercise. So thank you for sharing those videos. We're gonna have a look at those now. Thank you, bye bye Joan. Give thank Joan you. a wave thank everybody. You. Bye. Thank you Joan. Well, everyone, what an amazing day we've had. We've come all the way to the Shetland Islands to come to Saxevoord Spaceport. We met Mason, who's going to be an astronaut, and he showed us a rocket that was made by the children on the island. And do you remember who was in the rocket? That's right, we met Snoopy, didn't we? And we found out why Snoopy is so important to space travel because he shows us when everything becomes weightless. And then we became weightless when we went to Mission Control and we saw Mason's amazing desk with all of his space things. And that's when we learned about our seatbelts. Do you remember? And we put our seatbelts on and then we got a very special message from a very special lady. Britain's first ever astronaut sent us a video message, didn't she? Her name was Helen Sharman. 
And then we met some of Mason's friends, Sydney and Joan, who taught us all about life in space, learning about food and how to look after our teeth, and we even did some exercise. I hope you've had a wonderful live lesson. And now let's go to some of your questions for Mason. Wow, what a busy day we've had, Key Stage 1. We've seen and learned so much here at Saxavord Spaceport with Mason. Have you had a good time, Mason? Oh, it's been a blast. Thank you so much for coming up here. Oh, thank you. I'm sure the children have loved it. Now, before we go, we've had thousands of questions coming in from children all over the world. Yeah but we can only choose a few before the end of this lesson. So I've picked a few, and I picked ones that lots of you asked. So listen carefully, because it might be just like your question. Now this one's come from Asha Pandey, but it's from lots of children as well. What is it like training to be an astronaut? What sort of things do you do? Oh, it's just being active and being fun. We saw that earlier today with Joan leading the exercises. And that's a big component. And then just repetition, like what you do with science and math, where you're just con constantly following what you're doing over and over, that's the biggest key, because then it just comes to you. Naturally. So practicing, lots of practicing, is practice, that the tip? Practice, practice. Oh, wow, OK. Now, um, here's one from Brookman's Park School. And they said, when did you decide to become an astronaut? And why did you decide to become Ooh, an astronaut? That's a good one. Uh, I decided when I was probably your age uh, and I saw the shuttle programs. Uh, so if you watched the Q&A a couple days ago, that was an old shuttle program flight suit from the 80s and 90s. And that just inspired me. And since then, I've always wanted to be an astronaut and go into space. Wow, so Mason was your age when he decided he wanted to be an astronaut. I wonder how many people watching right oh. now are thinking, hmm, I could be an astronaut too. And they have a chance now. They too. do, they do. And you've already started to learn so much. You've already done some exercises and learned how to clean your teeth. I have pizza. They're re and they mm -hmm. pizza. They surely they're ready to go now. Oh, yeah. Right, Seven Generation School. What advice would you give to somebody? This is a good question after oh, yeah. the one we just had. What advice would you give to somebody who wants to be an astronaut? Just... Astronaut, you can be whatever you want to be because new space, where we're going with space, as long as you're the best at what you love to do, there's going to be opportunities for you. Wow, so, so you don't have to be a scientist or an engineer or good at maths? No, it, it helps if you have an understanding, but if you want to be a farmer or a plumber or a fashion designer or an artist, be the best that you can be as one of those and you'll have opportunities to go to space. Wow, how exciting. Right, um, this question came in from a few people, but um, it says, if, if you were not going to be an astronaut, what would you do for a job? Ooh, ah, that's a tough one. Mm. Uh, well, we all want to be like professional football players or we want to go travel the world or something like that, but I'd be a sheep herder. A sheep herder? Yeah, why not? It's cold up here in the Shetland Islands. No, why Islands. not? It would be fun. Have you been outside? It's no, I freezing. haven't. It's <laughs> freezing. <laughs> okay. Um, this one, this is a good question from Inchview in uh, school who said, is it difficult training to be an astronaut? Are you finding it hard? I, there's times when it's challenging. I mean, anything that when you're trying to be the best of the best, um, you're going to have ups and downs. But if you work hard, it's not, it's, it's enjoyable and I really enjoy the process. Excellent. Now, Manor House School have got a question for you. What happens in space if you get poorly? If you're sick in space, what happens then? Ooh, well, that's a tough one. So you want to try to capture whatever might be sick or ill or anything because you don't want anything floating around. But if you're feeling unwell, there's medication, medicines and things that you would take here. Say you were sick from missing school one day so the similar things, like you just rest, drink water, uh, and then take whatever the doctor prescribes to you, because every flight will have a medical person who looks in charge of the oh, crew. Oh, I see. So because you can't go to the doctor, no. you bring the doctor you with you. You bring the doctor with well, you. Well, that's a good idea, isn't it? OK, last one. I'm afraid we're running out of time. But our last question comes from St. Charles School, and it's a good one to end on. Are you scared about going into space? Terrified, absolutely terrified. But the sense of adventure and excitement of trying something new outweighs 
that terror, which I think, you know, if we want to do anything, you want to go live, work, and play in space. If you don't know that there's that aspect of being a little bit of afraid in you, then it's almost like anyone could do, go do it. So it takes really the brave and the bold to, to make that first step. Wow, like a real explorer going into the Word. unknown, amazing. Wow, that's a great question for us to end on. And I'm afraid, children, that that is going to have to be the end of our live lesson today oh. here from the Shetland Islands with Mason. We've had so much fun. We've had Snoopy, we've had Mason, we've had Space Helmets. We've had a great time. We've met some wonderful people. But most of all, thank you for you coming today and you being a part of this lesson. Now, teachers, we do have another lesson this afternoon for Key Stage 2. So if you'd like to tell your Key Stage 2 colleagues to sign up for that, it's not too late. We're getting thousands of people signing up all day long. So Key Stage 2 teachers can join us this afternoon for a lesson all about rockets and forces. And we will be, hopefully, fingers crossed, launching a rocket today as well. Maybe not a big rocket, but a little rocket. Um, there are lots more lessons like this on stemlife.co.uk. So if you've enjoyed today's lesson, teachers and children, then please go to stemlife.co.uk. We're doing this all through 2023. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really, really hope to see you either this afternoon or in one of our future lessons. Thank you so much to Mason and everyone here at Saxavord Spaceport in the Shetland Islands. And thank you to all of you in your schools. Bye-bye, have a great day. Bye. Bye.